In this lesson, we are going to add a sidebar to a Squarespace website. This is for those templates that do not come with a sidebar. So for instance, Brine or 7.1. In this case, we have a 7.1 website. So the first thing you want to do is um, if you have a 7.0 website with Ajax, like Brian has, for instance, go into your site styles and disable Ajax. Um, that's really important. 7.1 doesn't have Ajax, so we don't have to do it here. Next, go to the sidebar plugin website that I linked to and um, then here you can purchase the plugin. You can either buy a single use license uh, or a business license if for instance you are a designer and intend to use this for your clients. You will be given a zip file and you open the zip file and download it onto your computer. And then in the zip file you basically have um, you know, this folder here and then an HTML file, a CSS and a JavaScript file. So once you have done that, you click on the instructions HTML file here. This will open up a browser window. And I definitely recommend to read these instructions carefully, but I will also take you through them in this video. So the first thing you wanna do is there are two files the JavaScript and the CSS file that you want to upload to your website. So let's go back to our website. And the way we do this is we go to pages, we go to the not linked section, we add a link. And then here we go to um, the link editor, click on file and then you upload these two files. Now I've already uploaded them. So I'm just going to do the first one, you know, going to do the JS file and save that. And I'm just going to call it, you know, sidebar JS and save this. And then I'm going to do the same thing again and go to the link editor and then, you know, grab my CSS file, save that and just call it sidebar CSS. Okay, and so now you have, you know, these two files are now on your uh, website. So the next thing we want to do is uh, on our website, we go to the not linked section and we add a blank page and I'm just going to call it, you know, sidebar. Now I have actually already created a page, but uh, we're just going to do, you know, another one. Uh, so this is going to be an empty page and this is basically what holds the content of your sidebar. So I'm actually going to delete this again because I have already created a sidebar page. And make sure if you go into your page settings that the URL slug, you know, is sidebar. Um, and then here you just basically, you know, go into edit, then you can add a section. And you can just add what you would like to appear in your sidebar. You don't have to worry about formatting because it will actually all get condensed to the width of your sidebar. So I literally just add the blocks that I want to add and that's it, you know, and then just save that. The other important thing that we want to do is we want to go to our page settings for the sidebar page and uh, go to SEO and then we want to um, hide this page from the search engines because you know we don't want this one to show up separately anywhere and then we save that so the next thing we have to do is we have to uh, add some code to our blog that tells it to point to our sidebar page now if you go back to the sidebar instructions now here you enter the URL slug, you know, of the um, page. So you can name the page something different. You just make sure that it's the same as in here. So I just call it sidebar. I don't have another page called sidebar in my uh, menu here. And you can also do some further configurations if you like to. So for instance, here I usually say I only want this to apply to blog items. I don't want this to show up anywhere else. 
and if you want to apply it to only a specific blog let's say you have you know more than one blog then here you can also you know add the collection ID and this means that this sidebar you know the page with the slug sidebar will only show up on this blog so once you have configured this you will see this code here so you copy this code then you go back to your website go to your blog page settings you go to advanced and then here we're going to inject the code into the page header so we're just going to paste this in here and save it and now we go back to our blog and click on a blog post and voila here is our sidebar so now I find uh, when it comes out of the box like this, I find this gap a little bit too narrow here. You know, I would like to have a bigger gap here. This is too close. You can configure this. So we go back to the sidebar instructions page. And if you scroll down, you can customize. Uh, there's actually a lot of options that you have here. You will see like a preview here. So your content is on the left and here is your sidebar. You can add a background to the sidebar with rounded corners if you like. You can also, you know, put your sidebar on the left, you know, see, then it jumps to the left. You can say where you want to position it on the mobile and you can add margins and, you know, you have quite a lot of options here. So what I usually do is, uh, and I have already done this actually here, um, I add some padding. Now the padding is actually added to both sides, left and right, which I don't necessarily want, but we'll fix that later. And because I've added the padding, I've also changed the width. So if I take the width away again here, the default is 260 pixels. So I'm making it 280 pixels. So what happens is as you up, you know, change uh, the settings here, if you scroll down, you're actually given some code here that relates just to the changes. All of the CSS comes from the CSS file that we uploaded earlier. So now, you know, we um, can uh, just set, um, sorry, copy and paste this code here. So we're just going to copy it, go back to our website, and we're going to go to the custom CSS section. So here's our custom CSS. And then we are just, I'm just going to plug this here at the end down here. I'm going to save it. And now if I go back to my blog, you can see now it's actually a wider gap. But now, you know, because there's also still the padding on the right and I really you know don't want that so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, have a look at this here and here you will recognize some of the values that we just you know entered here on this page so um, here is the padding if you have two values here that means uh, the first one relates to top and bottom the second one relates to left and right but you can actually assign a value to each direction so i'm just gonna add you know so this is top zero right zero bottom zero and then the left has 20 picks padding and you'll see you know that uh, this has actually now widened my sidebar a little bit because i don't i've taken away the padding on the right so i like this a lot better now so this is just a really nice way um of customizing the sidebar and let me just save that making it your own uh, so by all means you know have a little play around with this if you're comfortable with css if you have any questions about the sidebar plugin or something doesn't quite work reach out to sqsp themes you know go to their website they have a support page here they are very helpful and uh, i'm sure they will you know be able to assist you but yeah, so um, the nice thing is that with this plugin, you can have as many sidebars as you like. So you could add sidebars to pages. 
if you have multiple blogs you can have a different sidebar per blog so for instance i use blogs uh, for my e-courses and each e-course has its own sidebar because it has its own navigation through the course so i i just create you know all these different pages for each of these um, sidebars it's just a wonderful wonderful plugin i hope uh, you enjoyed this lesson thank you